Spang and castration, man's dominion over every living thing. Spang and castration, invented in the early BCs, helped man control the size of animal populations, made domesticated animals more manageable, and enabled man to increase food production. Spaying and castration are the procedures in which an animal's sex organs are removed. Spaying is neutering in females and castration is neutering in males. Neutering is a term that means to make sterile. This term refers to both procedures. In the procedure of spaying a dog or cat, the animal's ovaries and uterus are removed. During this procedure, a small incision is made in the lower abdomen. Next, the major blood vessels are tied off and finally both ovaries and uterus are removed. In castration, an animal's testicles are removed. A small incision is made and the blood vessels supplying the testicles are tied off. The animal is put to sleep with an anesthetic during both neutering processes. Dr. Donna Lau is the owner and veterinarian at Highland Animal Hospital. The process of spaying and castration varies um, from country to country. In the United States and at Highland Animal Hospital, in spaying, we remove the, odor, the ovaries as well as the uterus. Um, in some European countries, they only remove the ovaries and leave the uterus. Um, in castration, we remove the testicles. And the reason for that, in removing the testicles and not just uh, doing a, a vasectomy, is that a lot of the reason for doing the neutering is to remove the hormonal influence that the dog has to help them behaviorally and medically. When you neuter an animal, you are taking away the sex organs so they are unable to reproduce, and the sex hormones. When the animal is intact, they still have both of these. Intact means the animal has not been neutered. The sex hormones in females is estrogen, and in males is testosterone. These hormones can control the animal's behavior and sex drive. In the procedure of castrating a large animal, such as horses, pigs, and cows, an emasculator is typically used. This tool is used during bloodless castration. First, the vets inject an anesthetic in the animal. Next, an incision is made in the scrotum and one of the testicles is pulled out. The emasculator is used to crush the cord, which smashes the blood supply, causing the testicles to dry out. Spaying of large animals is rarely done because females are not exposed to males. Dr. Jessica Rexroth is a large animal veterinarian at the Quaker Town Veterinary Clinic. Animal we'll use a scalpel to make an incision in the scrotum and then we'll pull out one of the testicles and kind of strip all the fascia back and then we use something called an emasculator um, that we crunch the cord with. So what it does is it um, kind of smashes the blood supply and, and all the other muscles and things like that in the cord and then it will cut below that so it, it keeps them from bleeding and kind of seals everything off. So we'll do one and that will stay on for somewhere between three or five minutes usually and then we'll take that off and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. One reason animals were neutered is to make them more manageable. 8,000 years ago, man started to domesticate animals. Domestication of animals is a process of taming wild animals to make them more useful to humans. One of the earliest animals to be domesticated was the bull. This strong, tough animal was used as a source of transportation and to assist men in farming. Bulls tend to be mean and aggressive, but when they are castrated, they become submissive. This is because inside the testicles, there are large amounts of testosterone, the male sex hormone. Early farmers have observed that when an animal is castrated, it becomes more docile and more controllable. Man could move out west faster to start new civilizations and could plow large areas of land with ease. Scott Sell is a dairy farmer at Crystal Springs Farm. Uh, with a bull, uh, it's very dangerous to handle a bull. They, a lot of times they, they will attack you, they'll push you around and uh, on a farm, a dairy farm like this, to have any bulls around, you know, whenever you're around the females, they feel as though you're moving in on their, on their uh, girlfriends. So they want you out, so they can push you. This is also true for dogs. According to a recent study, about 50 to 75% of dogs were castrated or spayed because of aggression. After they were neutered, they showed improvements in their behavior and became more docile. As far as the behavioral reasons are concerned, 
Um, in male dogs especially, they can tend to be sometimes aggressive if they're not neutered. They do tend to roam a lot more if they get out. They tend to want a urine mark, so that becomes a problem around the house where they lift their leg on the furniture and so forth. In the 1600s, man started to neuter the animals used in the food industry, such as cows and pigs. When these animals are castrated, they become bigger, so they produce more meat, and their meat is more tender. Since then, the food production has increased, and there is better quality of meat. Dr. Richard Detweiler is a treasurer at the American Museum of Veterinary Medicine. Established in 1990, this museum is one of the only veterinary museums in the United States. Small animals, uh, pigs for instance, the sows were sometimes spayed, all male pigs, piglets, are castrated when they're very young, six to eight weeks old, to make the meat more palatable, they grow more rapidly and better quality of meat. And you can't eat um, meat from an old boar, it's too strong. Sows in the 17, 1800s were sometimes spayed, again without anesthesia, so that they could would grow larger and heavier and a better quality of meat. Nowadays, a very few female sows or sows are, are uh, spayed. All, all male piglets are for consumption. Rapid population growth of dogs and cats made spaying and castration an innovation. When an unneutered cat or dog is left in the wild, they will keep reproducing and reproducing and reproducing until they die. According to the SPCA of Los Angeles, in six years, one female dog and all of her offspring can theoretically produce about 67,000 dogs. In seven years, one female cat and all of her offspring can theoretically produce about 420,000 cats. To assure that these animals do not reproduce, spaying and castration is the solution. Where do all these animals end up? Living on the dirty streets, trying to live off of what little they have. The lucky ones end up in animal shelters, just waiting and waiting for a loving family to adopt them. Today, there are too many dogs and cats in the world and not enough homes and necessities for them to survive. The Spay USA stated, each day 10,000 humans are born in the USA and each day 70,000 pups and kittens are born. As long as these birth rates exist, there will never be enough homes for all of the animals. Some people say they have the solution, a law for mandatory spaying and castration. So far, California is the only state that has this requirement. There are some places in the country where it's required, especially in California, where they tend to be very progressive as far as their pet laws are concerned. Um, there are laws that encourage it, for instance, the fact that you get a discount on your license fee if your pet's spayed or neutered in Pennsylvania. But some people don't agree. Many dog owners participate in dog showing. In this sport known as confirmation, the dog must be intact. Others would like to breed their pet. Many say it is taking away their rights as a pet owner. As the laws as well as the techniques of spaying and castration continue to evolve, three things are certain. First, spaying and castration controls the size of animal populations. Instead of being a nuisance because of overpopulation, dogs and cats are lovable, furry pets and companions. Second, spaying and castration makes domesticated animals more manageable. For example, more manageable animals enable demand to have more efficient transportation and more productive farming methods. Third, spaying and castration has enabled man to increase food production. With a more abundant and better quality food supply, man's health, happiness, and longevity has increased. As stated in Genesis, man shall have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Spaying and castration illustrates man's domination over the animal kingdom for the advancement of mankind.